What's up guys, it's been a while. I have a little bit of time on my hands tonight. Um, 2.45 in the morning, I'm sitting outside of a Bucky's waiting to shut their water off. But I haven't had time to make anything, not by choice. However, this week is important. We had the OTA starting up. A little chaos ensued to start it with Rogers and Lazard's catastrophic injuries. Uh, media is going to blow everything out of proportion for us. We're under a huge microscope with the national media and we have not been in this position in 12 years. However, we really got to try to hold it together and, and ignore the extra hype because that got scary for a good half hour, 40 minutes, I think, <laughs> until other reports started coming out saying that Rogers didn't get taken to the, to the locker room or anything, so we, we all should have known he was okay. But we have every right to have that little anxiety with injuries. I mean, where you've been a very injured team over the last several years, and that's something that, you know, it's pretty much the only thing that, that could derail this season, I think. So we, we were all justified in being nervous about that, I'm not going to lie, but overall – Knowing that Rogers only strained his calf, he's got the self-awareness to know when his body doesn't feel right. That's huge. Uh, we won't have to worry about him playing hero ball in preseason or practice. I highly doubt we're even going to see him in preseason, which is just going to add to that anticipation. Lazard went down for a couple plays in the seven on sevens with a gonad injury. He hit his, he got his uh, downstairs mix up pegged, but he also confirmed he's fine. No big setbacks there. Uh, I believe it was Becton and Hall that sat out. Rightfully so. I don't want to see Brees on a field until two weeks before before uh, game day. Just because uh, there's no reason to risk any kind of injury. And he had so much in the tank last season. I think, I think he's going to be productive pretty quickly this year. I think he's going to surprise people. The injury happened early enough, in my opinion, where I don't think we're going to see a Saquon-like production slip. I mean, our halfback room is disgusting right now. I, I can't wait to see how this how this team all plays off each other, man. You got Brees Hall, Michael Carter, Bam Knight, and then Abanaconda. My friend was, was talking up Abanaconda, hoping that the Panthers took him. Abanaconda, Abanaconda, Izzy, and he was telling me, you know, he thought that Izzy was going to be the best, the best productive halfback out of this class. So to find out, we were we ended up picking him up, and as late as we did was just phenomenal. I think that kid's going to have a really big role come midseason. You know, we're pretty much set at halfback for a few years, which is very nice. I miss our old run game, man. The days of Curtis Martin and Sean Green, Chris Ivory, Bilal Powell. Like those, we haven't had an impact guy like that in so long. LaDainian Tomlinson, man, my all time favorite, favorite non jet. I love that guy. High character people. Like our whole team is high character right now. It's phenomenal. Uh, this is the best roster that I think we've had since I became a fan in 1999 when I was just getting old enough to understand it um wilson good old zachary wilson showed out at otas again on seven on sevens uh i'm not surprised you know he got to clear his head a little bit and something that has been kind of like a minority pick between fans is that you know wilson is not going to be taken over for rogers when rogers retires but however in my opinion, I think Wilson was a big reason Rodgers wanted to come here because they got close, according to reports, and they've been in contact since they did the joint practice, what was that, two years ago? And I think Rodgers really, really wants to help Zach, which is something that was reported that he wasn't about developing players, but the situation's different. He was not here when we drafted Zach, and... I think he sees a lot in Zach. The fact that Zach gets to be taught by his mentor for what I think is going to be three years. I think I think Rogers is going to stick around for two to three years. You know, I heard rumors 
of a four-year deal with a void year at the end and an out after two to three years depending on how they how they spin it that's not like a sourced thing or anything that's just what i i'm gathering off of many different reports that i've seen it's just something that makes sense to me connor hughes with his with his talk of uh the contract's gonna be crazy and he's gonna take a huge pay cut i believe him connor's usually good with with uh connor connor's usually pretty good with with what he says it always comes up i think, I think he's the best beat reporter we got he, he doesn't actively go after drama i mean that question with zach last year was kind of rough but you know it's a, it was a real question you know do you do you hold yourself accountable i mean we all we all knew the answer it was just the wrong answer and now we have rogers you know it's it's a very very weird butterfly effect right there the last few years how everything has gone down now we have a hall of fame quarterback something we haven't had a chance at since Namath. and uh couple other things you know you had Garrett Wilson making a couple of beautiful beautiful catches and uh who did he fake out on that Nazaldine I think it was Nazaldine there was a clip where he just juked the hell out of him love to see it he's already in mid mid-season form based on reports from camp uh and then right before the end of the week what was it yesterday I saw I started seeing the name Cap man Jerome Cap Cap is turning heads at camp so maybe we got a little a little uh cinderella story in the making uh today d hop d hop got released unexpectedly before the june 1st deadline i don't know why they wouldn't just wait to release him save themselves what i think was 18 million on the cap or 10 million dead cap hit um Sorry, I don't, I'm not super prepared for this. It's a little impromptu video before I have to go to work here early morning. But I've seen a lot of people talking about the fact that he that he does not want to come to the Jets. He he has his top five teams. You know, in all honesty, I really really think he ends up with the Bills. And it sounds like a really crummy situation for us, but a part of me almost wants that to happen. Because not only do we have DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner, and I think that they can handle the outside receivers for any team. You know, if we're not worried about the Dolphins and everybody's talking smack about the Dolphins, why would we be worried about D Hop and, and Diggs? Uh, but the big thing in that story is this Diggs is already unhappy. And if you bring in another, like a 1A or 1B to his 1A or 1B, how pissed do you think that dude's going to be? You know, is that going to light a fire under him? I don't know. The way he acted at the end of last season, I think that it would cause a mutiny. And it would work in everybody's favor that has to play the Bills. If he goes to Kansas City, that's a little stressful. But, again, we got the best cornerback room in the league. You got Sauce to cover number one. So, say we'd have Sauce covering Diggs and DJ covering D-Hop. But then you got... The best slot, in my opinion, probably the, the top two to three slot cornerback in the league covering Gabe Davis. We signed Chuck Clark, and I think he can take care of Knox and the rookie Kincaid. But we also have Quincy, who's fast. He's not perfect in coverage, but he's fast. And I still think we have a shot at signing Quan. I think Quan's coming back, but he's going to do what he did last year and wait until the last minute to sign, you know, to get out of the extra workouts i don't know why i mean I, I guess i do know why he's a bet less risk of injury and you know if you don't have to get somewhere you're gonna get paid regardless you know so i i understand it but i i think that those are our defense is stacked man our secondary is gonna be all right uh plus you got tony adams who played pretty damn well against seattle he was all over the field I, i'm really not worried about anybody in the receiving room for any other team we have the best corner room in the league i don't care what that previous report said the little ranking thing that happened and sorry about the walkie talkie i'm i'm waiting to communicate communicate i gotta have it on me right now but uh i think i think we're gonna be all right whether d hop signs with the bills the chiefs it doesn't matter you know uh Josh Allen had the two worst games of his season last year against our defense, and there's reasons for that. And we have not lost the 
main X factors in that in those decisions. Um, plus, there's also a, a, an option out there with uh, the Titans, Biard, 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 whatever the, the free safety out of there. If we can pull him, I mean, that's going to solidify everything. You know, we'll free up some cap space. We're probably getting rid of Jordan Whitehead, which I honestly think he just had a down year last year. I think he's going to be good, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I'm so excited for this season to start, and it's just, it's just not here yet, obviously. But you know, there's a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of strong storylines, and a big thing that could come up is the Hard Knocks. They you, they announced it last March that the Lions were, were going to be on it, and it's very late in the summer for them to not announce it in the next week or two. But we have one jets drive going on which has been phenomenal the last two episodes were great and we got i think it's a three-part series so ascension is going to be over after next week i wouldn't be surprised if we get the announcement at the end of ascension and i think a big thing is that they're going to keep one jets drive involved with the hard knock series like they're not going to lock out our own production team and social media teams love to see the see like uh the youtube guys get recognition in that first episode that was great you know, shout out to uh, the guys at Talking Jets and Matt O'Leary and Ryan. You know, they've been pretty solid with talking me into doing stuff like this and giving me advice. Same with Buffalo Jets fan, man. Uh, come back to Twitter, Buffalo. It needs you. You're the you're the enforcer in the in the shit talking game. I dig it. But, hey, man, I hope you guys have a great week. And I'm going to try to make another video on Friday. Just a little recap video for now. Once the season starts up, it's going to be pretty cool to do more videos. Hopefully, I can get my, my followers up so I can, uh, my subscriptions up so I can do the live feeds. Um, but, yeah. That's it. Four minutes to, to shut down, man. Got to go turn some water off and fix some pipes. Y'all have a good night.